So over the last couple of years, a lot of people have taken up running and for good reason. Now I can say from first-hand experience, just going out and doing uh, some long continuous runs, it does get pretty boring. So a good way to mix this up is with some interval running. Now, one way that we can work out what our interval running session will consist of is to use our maximal aerobic speed. Now, forget about COVID, maximal aerobic speed is the talk of the town. I'm hearing it in the gym, at the park, in the staff room at work, even on the dance floors of the local establishments, there's some whispers. Everyone's talking about what is this maximal aerobic speed? Now, I know when I first came across uh, this whole concept of maximal aerobic speed, it was a little bit confusing. So today I want to run through exactly what it is and how you can implement it into your own training. Alright, welcome back to the Triax Performance YouTube channel. My name is Sean. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I've had to send Rob away for a little bit. He's spent a little bit too much time in front of the camera lately. So I just told him, Rob, just settle down, just have a break, have a spell. Um, and now I'm going to jump in and have a have a crack at this. Now, I don't know if you've uh, noticed um, what I'm wearing here. Snazzy little t-shirt with our new Triax Performance logo on it something we've been uh, working away at um, the last couple of months and we're very happy with how it's turned out. Um, head over to our Instagram page actually, Rob put a nice little video together, um, sort of unveiling this uh, nice logo and all the, uh, the qualities that we stand for here at Triax. So very good work by Rob as usual. Um, and again, uh, as Rob always mentions and Damo mentions, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. It would mean the world to us. Today, we're going to be speaking about maximal aerobic speed or MAS, as I mentioned off the top. Before we get into that though, I think it is important that we uh, touch on first VO2 max and what that is, because it um, plays a very important role in how we work out our maximal aerobic speed. Now, your VO2 max, it is the maximal amount of oxygen that your body can use uh, during exercise, and it's pretty much the gold standard uh, measure of what your cardiovascular or aerobic fitness would be. Now, Rob has actually put together a very good video on VO2 max. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on it today, so if you're having a little bit of trouble wrapping your head around that, I'd strongly encourage you to check out that video. I'll pop it up here or here, wherever they, wherever they pop up. Um, check that video out as well. It'll hopefully make a bit more sense um, by the end of this video. But now going back to MAS, I think where a lot of the confusion arises from is in the definition. And it's certainly where I used to get a little bit confused. So MAS is the lowest running speed at which your VO2 max is first achieved. So if we're doing a lab-based test and we're running along and we hit our VO2 max, we're basically just looking at what our running speed is in meters per second when we first hit that VO2 max. Now, even though our VO2 max is that gold standard of our aerobic fitness, it's a little bit difficult to go out and run at a certain percentage of that um, out on the field or out on the track. So that's where the MAS comes in because it allows us to run at specific speeds or specific distances. Because we've got the number in meters per second, we're not just guessing. We've actually got a specific number we can use to then go and create our sessions and make sure we're training in a way that's gonna help us to improve. Now, your MAS is a really good tool to use as well because in terms of actually getting fitter, it's been shown that uh, the amount of time that you spend at or above that MAS is really important for that adaptation and that aerobic improvement. So even more so than like a slow, long, continuous jog, which a lot of people like to do, I like to do that as well, but it's a good way to mix up your sessions um, and continue to get that improvement. Now, if you are familiar with MAS or have done uh, some intervals using your MAS running before, either on your own or as part of a team, um, you're probably most familiar with the Eurofit method, which as you can see, Rob's put a nice little graphic um, together here. Typically, what this will do is using um, your MAS, split, splitting a big group up into smaller groups, um, and then each, each group is a bit more 
running at a bit more of a specific distance um, to them for their own fitness. So you might get four groups and they're just running different distances specific to them. And then they'll have that rest at the end, turn around and run back. Otherwise, the other um, method that is commonly used as well is the grid method. So you, as you can see here in this little picture, you have um, running at above that 100% MAS. And then you have like a, almost like an active recovery run where you start to run say to the right. And then as you turn the corner again, you'll start to hit that higher speed again. And you just start running around in a square or a grid. So the main pro for MAS is that each training session is gonna be individualized to you. So you can keep gradually overloading your sessions, making them a bit harder so that you continually improve. Now, this is really good for uh, large groups, team sports, as I mentioned, because everyone's gonna have a different fitness level. And when you have, say, a big group do the same session, there are gonna be guys that it will be good for, but then there are also gonna be guys that it's probably too easy for, they're gonna be a little bit underprepared, and then there are gonna be guys that it's too hard for as well. And then you have the potential for overtraining and and injury as well. So it's just a good way to make sure that everyone's doing something a bit more specific to them and their fitness levels. Using MAS is also a good way to track how far you've run if you don't have a smartwatch or say one of those little individual GPS trackers. So you can take the distance of each rep, how much you do in each set, and then add it all together and you've got your total distance. So um, it's a good way to, to get around that because smartwatches and GPS units can be pretty expensive. Now, unfortunately, like anything good in the world, there are some cons. So sometimes the volume can be a bit low. So if you've ever done a short interval MAS session, it is pretty hard and pretty taxing and three to four sets is generally enough. But sometimes that total distance run is only going to be, you know, maybe two, three, four Ks maybe. So, you know, if you're training for a certain sport, particularly in the pre-season, that's not going to be enough to, to prepare you for, for games in the season. So that's another little hurdle uh, to jump over because, you know, those, those few sets of running is only going to take about, say, 20 minutes maybe. So you might need to incorporate those intervals using your MAS with uh, some skills work maybe or even uh, some other running um, just as a bit of a top up, depending on where you are at in the season. So with anything, of course, there are going to be pros and cons, but I think using your MAS is a really great way to program some running sessions. So one, you can create running programs that are specific to your fitness to make sure you're not uh, overloading or underloading. And two, you can use it as a direct measure of progress to ensure that you are continually improving and not stagnating uh, or plateauing. So you can continue to increase those running distances or you can um, do another fitness test, um, retest for your MAS score and then go and then apply that to your running sessions again to ensure that it's accurate the whole time. Now, if you have any questions, uh, a bit confused with anything I just mentioned uh, or even want a running program for yourself, please reach out, uh, send us a message, comment down below. Um, we'd love to help out uh, in any way that we can. As always, thank you uh, for tuning in. Again, just gonna plug this uh, nice new logo. Go check out the Instagram, the video that Rob put together, he loves it. But if you haven't already, please uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. It means the world to us if you can do that. And we're gonna have a lot of uh, exciting content coming up on YouTube uh, and Instagram as well. Um, so it just helps to keep you in the loop there so you don't miss out on, on anything. So until then, see you next time.